Hey guys, welcome to the session by K21 Academy. In this session, we are going to discuss about AWS networking fundamentals in 10 minutes. Now let us take a quick glance at the agenda. Firstly, we will be discussing about virtual private cloud and its related components. Post that, we will be looking into load balancer and a networking. And then we will discuss about another service, Route 53, which is domain name service. Post that, we will discuss about Amazon CloudFront, which is content delivery network. And then we will discuss about the final service in networking at high level, which is AWS Direct Connect. And at the end, we will see all the services in the console. So we have taken a clip from one of our certification training program on AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate SAAC02. And in this clip, our expert will talk about AWS networking fundamentals. Hey everyone, uh, so welcome back. This is Atul from team k Academy. And in this lesson, we are going to look at network services, what these network services mean and uh, what all services are av available in this uh, category for AWS. So if you see uh, the network, we also call in AWS called VPC, virtual private cloud is nothing but a set of continuous IP addresses uh, that makes a, a network and you get your IP addresses for the machine, which is a virtual machine or a load balancer or any resource or a database host or a machine through this set of IPs. And that network is we call VPC and that network is further broken down into smaller networks we call subnet. So you have, if you are coming from a, um, an application architecture background, you have a database tier, web tier, and application tier. So we deploy this database tier in one subnet, application tier in another subnet, and, uh, and then the web tier on another subnet. And subnet here is nothing but logical collection of set of IP addresses, which will then host your uh, database or virtual machine and so on. So this is a virtual, these dotted line represents a virtual uh, private cloud or VPC. So VPCs span across in a region. So you can have within a region, uh, multiple availability zones, uh, all covered by this VPC here. And within that uh, uh, v VPC, you have subnets. And in subnet, you create machines. Then you also have routers and gateways. Uh, and there are different type of gateways. And one of them is internet gateway, which helps any machine running on um, the AWS cloud to connect to the internet or outgoing connection will go to the internet from these uh, machines through this internet gateway uh, or any machine, anything, any machine that you want to connect to the cloud uh, will be connecting via this uh, internet gateway if it's running on a public uh, IP address. What is public IP? What is um, uh, private IP? If you're not clear with these we are going to cover in the respective networking module if you're come if you're uh, are watching this video or this lesson in our aws solution architect training so this is your internet gateway and routers you also have load balancers uh, in um, under the networking and role of network load balancer or role of load balancer is to distribute or balance the load across different servers running under different availability zones within a zone or across availability zone so you have machine one running in this here and machine two running in this here and all these machines are part of one VPC and I can deploy a load balancer and distribute the traffic between uh, machine one and machine two. So if request comes, there are different algorithms on which I can distribute the traffic. Maybe I can say round robin, which is say first request go to instance one, second request instance two, or I can say 50 or uh, 75% of the weight is goes to this instance and 25% goes to this instance. So that's load balancers. Then there is a, another service called Route 53, which is domain name service DNS. And you can configure DNS in AWS so that your request, which is coming over the internet, um, can then be distributed to the backend servers. In this case, EC2, which is uh, Linux or Windows machines. And then from there, it's fetching the data from S3 storage bucket. So this is a user which is getting the route from a route 53 and then forwarding request that route 53 will have in say some content coming from my static website which is stored on S3 buckets and another coming from another piece of data which is dynamic coming from EC2. So route 53 is nothing but a DNS service in AWS. And then you can also have a cloud front which is nothing but a content delivery network. So what happens is that typically if my website is hosted in the US, 
if I'm accessing this website from US compared to another person accessing this um, website from Asia, uh, the, because the person in the US is closer to that uh, website hosting, uh, typically that uh, speed or the response time is going to be uh, quicker if a person is coming from US. Um, so what I can do is, um, that is because uh, that person in US is closer to the hosting or where my website is hosted. Now, in order to speed up, you can do content delivery, which means, uh, or you can set up content delivery network in Asia so that the data is being cached uh, in closer to the location from where user is accessing that data. And only the dynamic data or data that have changed will be fetched from the server, a backend server, and then brought into CDN. And anytime the data changes, the fresh copy is built, pulled up by CDN so that data stays closer to the person who's accessing. And that's called as content delivery network. So the is Amazon's cloud uh, front is a content delivery network which securely delivers data videos, applications, and APIs to connect um, your backend services for low latency and high transfer speed. Um, and uh, your developers can configure CDN in front of your website. So that's um, CloudFront. And then final service in the networking on a high level is Connect or AWS Direct Connect, which is establishing a dedicated connection between your on-premise and AWS cloud. So this is a diagram where this is your customer premises and this is my AWS cloud. I can typically connect it over the internet, but that's maybe not be secure, secure or the connection might not be that fast because I'm relying on my wide area network when for internet speed. Other option is I can configure a direct connect, which will be a dedicated uh, pipe between my uh, AWS cloud and on-premise. So that reduces uh, the laten latency issues and increases the bandwidth output because I have a dedicated pipe. So these are some of the high level overview about networking. Uh, and as I said, as you go and create instances, you will create by default, uh, AWS comes with a default VPC. So you will be able to create additional VPCs or subnets and you, you will be able to, there are different gateways and you can add more gateways if required. You can configure load balancers and Route 53 and content delivery network CDN. So this is me here back onto the console. Let me go back to this uh, console. This is how the console will look like. Hold on one second. So this is I'm on S3 bucket. Let me exp uh, expand it. And then from services, I go to the networking. Um, so this is where, uh, this is my VPC cloud front uh, route 53 API gateway, something for a application programming interface. We'll cover that a little bit later, but mainly you need to worry about VPC and route 53. Uh, so I go to VPC and this is where you will see all my private clouds. There's a default VPC that comes out of the box and you couldn't create more additional VPCs here. So if you see, I have one VPC defined in London. There are three subnets within that VPC. There's a route table, which is for routing traffic outside the uh, AWS or within from one VPC to another VPC. Internet gateway is for my um, connecting to internet or connections coming from internet to AWS world. Egress uh, is um, outgoing uh, outgoing internet gateways. Um, elastic IPs, I have set of IPs which always stay uh, same. I can retain that IP uh, even on the uh, my virtual machines life cycle, which means uh, my machine stops and restart, I retain that IP. Or if I create a new, delete, terminate this instance and create a new instance and I my IPs, I want to assign the same IP, that's elastic IPs. This is a NAT gateway, which is for NATing. Um, if request is coming to a NAT gateway, which will then can forward it to my backend services, that's NAT, gate, NAT if you're coming from networking background. And some of these things we'll cover a little bit later. My network access control list and security group are, these are firewalls. Network access control is a firewall at a subnet level, where security group is a firewall uh, at a instance or a machine level and so on. So have a look at that. Um, just again, as I said, this module is going to be high level. We'll keep it high level. And then under when we look at respective modules, we might go a little bit deep into these topics. So that's AWS uh, uh, networks. Now head into the next lesson where we look at the database services and these are important if you're coming from a database background or at least good to know about these database services. So I'll see you 
in next lesson. So we have put down everything about the certification, including the basic concepts that one should know everything like introduction to AWS, security management AWS, object storage options, designing computing environment, networking and monitoring services, leverage Route 53 for hosting zones, database server and analytics, application and messaging services, configuration management and automation, architecting on AWS 1 and architecting on AWS 2. So in this training, we take you from basic to advanced level along with the tips and resources for clearing the certification exam. We also have a separate team working for CV preparation and on-job support. So if you want to become an AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate and want to learn right from basics to expert level, then we have a comprehensive step-by-step -step training for you that includes hands-on labs including the exam preparation and most important part, one-year on-job support. So if you are interested in this program, I would highly recommend you to attend the free class which covers most of the topics like why and who should learn AWS, cloud service deployment models and AWS services, demo on creating S3 bucket and making data available to the entire world and many other topics. So if you are interested in this free class, you can visit k21academy.com slash AWS SA02.